Hello everybody, I am Brian Mullins the Fox, and welcome to the documentary known as Dropping Flies. Let's start with part 1 of 12, October 16th, 2017 to February 27th, 2018. Before the timeline can begin, I'll explain with some more context beforehand. In September of 2017, I fully came up with the concept of the roast game by creating a table graph demonstrating whether or not a certain serving amount for each centerpiece meat filled up a family of 12 without sides. But before I made the claim, as you all know it today, I just went with children only being slaughtered for not believing in Christmas and yet not even eating them. That obviously changed because it's impossible to convince people of an alternative to any of these mentioned meat choices as the centerpiece of Christmas dinner during said period without having explained how families have done away with a child in means of consumption. It proved that none of these other centerpiece meats like ham, turkey, chicken, or roast beef filled up a family of 12. I can at least say with 100% certainty that I got the measurements right on the floor. This timeline begins within a month after the roast came as its original concept was first conceived. Before I started this furry channel, before 2018 even rang in as a quote unquote new year in the past, I will go deep into my past. Early morning on October 16th, 2017, I was waiting for my dad's old car to drive up the long gravel road to the front porch to then be picked up. It was a silver Chevrolet HHR. After a little talk or two with other people, we were back on the road again. It took us several hours, including times when we ate at a Wendy's right by a gas station, times we had to refuel and relieve ourselves or pee. And at long last, we arrived at the apartment complex we used to live in. I only arrived with my legal papers, three bags of clothes, and some mints and gum. I was wearing my old brown shoes back then. The night before I started my Google account, me and my dad were just chilling, playing video games, watching Netflix, and later on, gradually staying up longer at night each night as time went on. I started discovering more songs that I've heard before but didn't know the names of, the first one being Winter Olympics, which also went by a couple of other names. Starlight Review and Curtain Razor. The song was originally recorded back in 1960 and originally came out on the old KP78 RPM label. Then came an astonishing discovery on my end, Reach for the Stars by Richard Harvey from 1984. The song ends on a climactic and majestic high as it dies. On October 17th, 2017, I started my Google account. The first YouTube channel I was actually able to start and run was simply named Brian Mullins, which was mainly there to document the beginning of the conversation surrounding the topic of the roast game. The debate was destined to happen on the 17th, but it didn't. From Power Pikachu 21 to M. Harmon, then to Jim Shady, one by one, each had their own excuse for not accepting the challenge to entertain the hypothetical that is well known as the will tester hypothetical. Because the first few opponents didn't want to accept without explanation or accept the challenge at all. That was until Yana Girl 136 came along and changed everything. On October 20th, 2017, Yana Girl 136 was the first opponent to actually accept the challenge and went two rounds with me. She lost after she conceded her position in a little rage quit. I beat her easily by seven to nothing. During and sometime after the first roast game debate, me and Yana Girl 136 were constantly going back and forth between each other in other debates. One was about leggings, and the other one was about sports bras, and debating about whether or not complaining about wearing them is supposedly sexist. The first troll debate, right after the first successful actual roast game debate that counted, was limited to one round with a 1,000 character limit and was easily discardable in the total aspect of the conversation. Frankfurter 50 and Crazy 456 Rhino immediately upon seeing the fact that I won one debate and lost a troll debate, 
challenged me with the instance of their bullshit debate challenges, which were completely ignored with complete and justifiable prejudice. I held the first RoastGameDebate.org poll that expired on November 1st, 2017, merely asking, do you agree with this statement? 60% said yes, and 40% said no. As other polls progressed, the overall agree to disagree ratio sort of slipped. I made some musically inspired videos where I somehow relabel the videos, celebrate progress with a dialogue about this topic, and on November 29th, 2017, Wilson704 challenged me to a legitimate debate called Should Christmas End? Question mark. That debate had four rounds, each set with a maximum character limit, or at least 8,000 character limit. It ended as the voting time period did on December 7th, 2017. During and after the second roast game debate, the toxicity and the cope coming from the side that don't like me having this topic being talked about at all gradually grew immensely. After all that, I, in turn, started the first Roast Game Opinion Survey, asking the following query. Is killing your entire family perfectly justified because of the Roast Game? A past phenomenon. 67% said yes, while only 33% said no. During the months of December and a good portion of early January of 2018, Debate.org was suffering from a lack of activity of sorts when it came to their debates and forum pages. I was an edgy shit lord, mainly to entertain myself, which would now make me cringe or at worst get me banned off of YouTube had I not gotten rid of all those cringy edgelord videos at all. Throughout the first post-roast game holiday season, it was seriously inactive, so that is technically all that happened in late 2017, outside of other irrelevant forum posts I posted before and during this whole ordeal. Now we're in 2018 in this timeline. In early to mid-January 2018, the activity on debate.org was dead for a while, until around January 13th. After a month or so of posting forum posts in October and November of 2017, back and forths began, escalated, and went out of control. So KWLM, Mind Dagger, and a bunch of other trolls and people tried to scare me out of talking about this topic by forming, quote-unquote, the Anti-Roast Game Organization on January 28th, 2018. I held the last Roast Game poll called Should the Roast Game Be Taught in Schools? 55% said yes, while only 44% said no. Back around December of 2017, I had a debate with William Schultz on both Debate.org and DebateIsland.com, the latter being a website where you can vote for yourself, automatically rigging the fucking system, apparently, even though it was never fair in the first place. The one that couldn't easily be that riggable or fixed ended in a tie. Back to late January 2018. I had another debate, but with Mind Dagger, that also ended in a tie. That's a hell of an argumentative stalemate, if you ask me. More forum posts and forum topics kept the flames going and keeping others proverbially warm during this entire shitstorm and winter. KWLM came into view, hosted the final and successful attempt of a troll debate, which doesn't really or truly count as a legitimate debate. Troll debates were fixed from the start KWLM falsely claimed that all the progress, debates, and polls were somehow faked when they weren't, and that I was somehow an egotistical prick that doesn't understand what a fact is, trying to police me into silence, annoying the shit out of me to debate him, and I only did so because I was so fed up with ignoring him while he and other trolls harassed me. Not too long after Valentine's Day, I finished what was essentially my last debate, saying goodbye to Debate.org, while also commenting and responding to shit under the account name of Cherry Palm, or the account that got banned. Weird how I used to have two accounts, but before the website shut down in 2022, I had one I couldn't even sign into, and the other one was IP banned. Maybe both of them were. The world may never know. Around February 21st, 2018, I got permanently banned from Debate.org by corrupt moderators like Airmax in response to all these trolls and shitty people who felt like they couldn't counter the roast game, so deplatforming was their last resort. That's how they technically quote-unquote won the debate, which is incredibly shady and shitty. Shortly after that, the roast game debate.org shitstorm saga ends in such a defeat for free expression and has been casted before the website's shut down on June 6th, 2022, as a permanent reputational scar that cursed it into complete and utter damnation. 
While I was taking a break from all that bullshit, I was more focused on relaxing, dropping my old debate.org persona, and focusing on rebranding myself. I had furry inspirations that dated all the way back to early 2014, or the first one being Sasha Lafleur from All Dogs Go to Heaven 2. Others were Foxy Colleen and Aurora Spencer. After days of relaxing, watching content that is satisfying enough to cope with the permaban off DDO, including some videos where I see old abandoned and houses get demolished, I finally came up with a brand name for a new channel as I promised, wearing a panda head on my head. Gaming videos, reaction videos, and other fun videos because back then, YouTubers who wanted to try to make it big were going to those lengths. You know, make gaming videos, reaction videos, the scourge of the earth, you know, that kind of bullshit. The channel was named Brian Mullins the Fox. All the while, I said goodbye to my old and cringy channel. While I started singing songs by artists, I started showing a particular interest in singing, like songs by Engelbert Humperdinck, Tom Jones, etc. I also randomly posted music on my furry channel when I used to make cover videos until June of 2020. And that was obviously due to a copyright strike because their system is broken. And even if the system is not broken, it's not for me to maintain that standard of content. I used to do challenges and have them up without the fear of any of them getting taken down due to YouTube's continuously vague policy regarding harmful or hateful content. I used to run a music series that preceded the day I started Brian Mullins the Fox, called The Roast Game Society, where I parodized names of famous or library tracks slash songs all of this was obviously for shock value. Later on in the series, the paradising of titles began to wane. I started using the actual songs as names more often. The most popular video on my furry channel as of now is one of those videos called More by Kai Winding. In chapter 2, I'll go into February 28th, 2018, all the way up to August 12th, 2018. And until then, I will play you the entire montage of The Roast Game Debate.org Shitstorm Saga, The Roast Game A True Fact, and other things that happened around the time of the shitstorm.
continuing on after I started Brian Mullins the Fox. Throughout the months of March, April, and May, it has been mostly stagnant to say the least. From making reaction videos, falling out with Odin as a former subscriber, idolizing Majira Strawberry alongside with watching Mark Sparks and other furry content creators, all the other irrelevant furry channel shit aside, I ran a short-lived series on how to play the roast game in either a teasing way or a serious way without getting into trouble, getting into a fight, or worse, getting completely ostracized from and by your own family entirely. Not to veer off topic for too long, but I want to make things clear. I made a now non-existent satirical series known as Expose Theory. The reason why I deleted it was because it didn't really expose anybody. Not that it was intended to, and I'm sorry for that, even though it was mainly satirical and people got too offended and butthurt over it, because they actually think I'm slandering people back then, when I'm not. Back in January of 2018, I have made that six-part documentary establishing the roast game as fact, not fallacy then proceeded to provide proof for this claim as years passed by. In May, I thought about making my first ever animated movie, and I even had a trailer which I deleted promoting the idea. I gave an update completely scratching that idea. It was around the same month that I've hit the first channel milestone, and that will be mentioned in Chapter 10. I started analyzing the roast game Debate.org Shitstorm Saga on May 18th, 2018, then finished two days later on my old Rinky Dink ranting channel, also known as Brian Mullins The Rant. Fox. Although I cancelled the full-length animated movie idea, I made another roast game documentary going at the philosophical aspect of the roast game, called The Truth About the Reason Why Families Loved Their Own Children So Much, on May 21st, 2018. This was a couple or so weeks after I got my first laptop, this HP touchscreen laptop that was pretty good but awfully designed. Then on May 24th, 2018, the first of what will undoubtedly be many episodes slash cases in a series known as The Roast Game Theory comes out. It was about the case of Damian Amber Hafner of Fort Mill, South Carolina. We will talk about the impact this series had on the data we now know to be complete as the chapters go on. Around the months of May and June of 2018, amidst the fact that I was getting death threats and kill yourself comments, not too long after the roast game theory became a thing on my channel, I joined Dire Wolf's and Vincent Veritas's Discord servers to hang around or talk to them. I usually would have nothing to be bitching about, but the toxicity surrounding those servers broke me in many ways mentally. I mentioned in one commentary videos that I used to run a satirical internet series known as simply, quote unquote, The Fox. I will play that long clip for you. And now, second and last example, the shit surrounding me. Around May of 2018, just after I got my first PC, I started searching for Discord servers to join because at that time I was new to Discord. And then I stumbled upon Direwolf, this Canadian conservative YouTuber who had a very shitty Discord server alongside with Vincent Veritas and Clyde. During this time, I temporarily ran this politically satirical series called The Fox, the first episode pretty much satirizing QAnon by saying, Oh, veterans are pedophiles, even though that's not true. Even though that's not fucking true. QAnoners were saying that all liberals and all Democrats and that were pedophiles, which is not true. Not even in the fucking slightest. There are just only a few that are corrupt. And just like that, there are only a few veterans that are corrupt in the head and are very violent when it comes to domestic violence and shit like that. Then I shed on the BMI satirically by saying, in a nutshell, that it's not always accurate. And when you're muscular, sort of muscular like me, and the BMI says 30 or 32, that's not entirely accurate. Or not entirely <laughs> foolproof. And... Last but not least, the shit I said about the USSR being a republic. That was the biggest fucking trigger warning to these people in Direwolf's and Vincent Veritas's Discord server. Because I used a few screenshots showing that these communist regimes or countries were republics and that the USSR itself was also a republic. Even before all that, I used to run another satirical series called Expose Theory, where I satirically shat-talk Gordon Ramsay, and, uh, funny enough, 
satirized myself as being a quote-unquote conspiracy theorist to fool other people in believing that I was an actual conspiracy theorist when I wasn't. And the funniest bit about it was when I edited in Winston Churchill's face and made Adolf Hitler and Winston Churchill look like they have the same faces. If some fucking troglodyte still has a photo of that somewhere, I probably might like to see it again because it's funny as hell just to see how people get so fucking ass mad at satire like that. July 2018 wasn't much better for me than the previous months, but I started veering towards leaving those communities behind on Discord. Those communities are full of reactionary nitwits, overly sensitive man-children, and politically charged conspiracy theorists. The third of those that I've mentioned slash described will be important to mention later. In the same month, I released what would now be considered the second to last Roast Game documentary, but about the internal mental and psychological hostility towards the topic of the Roast Game on Debate.org, a syndrome that is either similar to or outright almost identical to Trump Derangement Syndrome, and that one is called the Roast Game Derangement Syndrome, which was released on July 24th, 2018. In August of 2018, I reached my emotional, intellectual, and psychological limit and left Dire Wolf's Vincent Veritas' and Going Gone's Discord servers around August 12, 2018. In Chapter 3, we will go over the time period between August 13th, 2018 and February 28th, 2019, or the Roast Game Triathlon Drama, using a pre-recorded video that was already out months before even recording this documentary. I started a three-video series debunking the Debate.org trolls on August 13th, which prompted the beginning of what will be a chain of seriously, mind-bogglingly stupid events. We'll call this the Roast Game Triathlon Drama. It all began on August 13th, 2018, with Going Gone's confusion. Him saying, I don't know what this is all about. I don't know the context. Can you please give me the context? And then as soon as I give him the context, he took screenshots of my old Roast Game Wiki that no longer exists anymore. And then not too long after the third and final episode of the debunking the debate.org troll series, the ad hominem attack was made near the end of August 2018. Then September began. Not a whole lot came out of it, just a couple of cringy drama rant videos throughout the month of September. And then I started doing research. The first video was published on September 27th, yet that was a mistake. I shouldn't have said that cannibalism was the actual purchase, which is stupid. But right after that, I made a video that actually did prove something. It was to prove that the calories add up for a child is a quote-unquote Christmas roast during the roast game era, which prompted an instantaneous response video several hours later, which was complete dog shit, there were non-arguments, maybe an ad hominem attack or two, and just ranting non-stop about shit he doesn't care about, allegedly, even though he actually does a shitty job at responding to anything I put out. And this video that I flagged for an abusive title was before the roast game is fat, F-A-T, came out. And I got backlash. Only a tiny bit of backlash, and I felt really bad. Because I got bullied, harassed, after, you know, flagging that one video. That was the only time where I flagged, and it worked. YouTube is a broken system when it comes to the flagging system. Even false flaggers get away with getting whole channels banned nowadays in 2022. But back in 2018, you wouldn't get away with it without any of this backlash. But the backlash was not the main issue. The backlash was just a temporary effect. But what came after was the beginning of their crafted conspiracy theory narrative. That after all this time, I'm somehow supposedly the mass manipulator, hiding evidence, hiding the truth, and spreading quote-unquote lies as truth. That's their conspiracy theory narrative. And October 2nd, my Discord server that no longer exists now was raided for a couple of minutes. Which prompted me to make a whole video exposing Slowpoke Garcia and EMC2103, which formerly went by the pseudonym Xscape69. My arguments were based on fact, evidence, logic, and reasoning. And to directly witch hunt me because I had unpopular views or that they thought I was inferior to them? Going Gone was spreading rumors about me, calling me a maniac, a conspiracy theorist, a four-year-old. This is absolutely despicable. But you know the funny thing is... I never stirred the pot. You only made me a victim of a witch hunt. That is the irony of it all. And if you're just too fucking stupid, 
or if you're just frothing at the teeth, woke in the eyes, piss the hell off at what I'm saying to you right now. Click the fuck off this video. Unsubscribe from my channel and never come back to this channel. End the witch hunt now. And then after this whole Discord raid ordeal, I had a karmic sub boost and they all look bad at this point. And throughout October, it was just drama video after drama video. It was just getting to the point where it was confusing. And then I made one video that triggered a 1v1. And this 1v1 was actually a debacle. It just all fell apart at the seams. I want to quickly summarize what happened during this debacle. After I've posted that video, telling them to watch a video about Sargon's Law made by Shane Killian over five years ago. Because I had the nearest suspicion that Going Gone, EMC2103, and the others back in 2018 were projecting their weaknesses onto me by calling me a conspiracy theorist and my channel a conspiracy channel. So I posted a comment or two about the situation surrounding me just to use this as an example of Sargon's Law. And Going Gone couldn't even remotely take it sitting down. He responded to me by calling him a cuck and literally diverting the attention from Sargon's Law and my example and making it all about me and my character. Later, it got spicy and heated. It was now about the roast game during this whole debacle. What would have been a quote unquote debate on debate.org was only in this comment section three years ago. Me and Going Gone had this back and forth. Going Gone made a few claims. One, that the sources in all of these videos about the roast game that I've made proved that I was lying. Two, that I've done no research and I have no evidence, which is a lie. And three, that I'm somehow a conspiracy theorist, regardless if my claim is true or not. He retracted the first two and said, well, I guess the sources didn't really prove that you were lying. And yes, you were right. It is a theory, not really separating the roast game theory and the roast game itself. But he also said it's not a fact, but it's just a theory, which is ridiculous. And not only that, but completely pants on head fucking retarded. The reason why I rage quit that fucking debacle is because Going Gone basically made an ass out of himself and clearly showed his true colors to me. That even if my claim is 100% true, that I'm somehow still a conspiracy theorist when I'm not. And they, alongside with Star Shadow, used this against me by claiming that I somehow backed out of the conversation because I was somehow owned or they somehow proved me to be wrong when I'm not. Why would they be using that as a point of insecurity if they're only trying to prove that I'm the only one that's insecure? It makes no sense. Again, it's completely retarded. Sure, I repeated insults at Going Gone. Sure, I was fucking irritated, not to mention annoyed as fuck. And he tries to come out as a good guy, trying to come out as the one that's being blatantly attacked and slandered and thrown under the bus when he's not. I've been the one that's thrown under the bus. I've been the one that was stabbed in the back for what I've said back in 2018. And they knew it. They knew it. They knew they couldn't hide it. They couldn't control the fucking nature of the conversation or the drama surrounding it. They just had to lie at the end. Now, let's pretend for the sake of argument that you are correct because you claim that you know that your family and families that you know don't eat or never will eat children for a Christmas roast. So what if I told you that was fallacious? And if I were to be skeptical of your quote unquote evidence, I would say you committed the argument from self-knowing, or the auto-epistemic argument. According to Wikipedia, the arguments from self-knowing take the form. If P were true, then I would know it. In fact, I do not know it, therefore P cannot be true. Or, if P were false, then I would know it. In fact, I do not know it, therefore P cannot be false. In practice, these arguments are often fallacious and rely on the veracity of the supporting premise. For example, If the roast game was true, then I would know that my family or other families I know 
slaughtered and eaten the child as a Christmas roast. Therefore, the roast game cannot be true. Also, shifting the burden of proof is, is by committing a logical fallacy known as the argument from ignorance. For example, as you put it, the first screenshot. Putting things in context and making viable arguments can be very different things. You should know. And of course, I believe in actual facts. Which in this case, is that families did not and do not eat their children for Christmas. While implying that the roast game is wrong because it can't possibly be true. And that I'm a conspiracy theorist because reasons. Then he can ignore any given fact, evidence, source, link, or argument proving the roast game as a fact. The second screenshot where he said, But you see, that never happened because no family I've ever known has ever done that. So, who did? That's the perfect example of the argument from self-knowing. This proves that Going Gone shifted the burden of proof. Hence, we must accept the roast game as the fact that families literally ate their own children as the Christmas roast after slaughtering them for not believing in Christmas, like the fact it is. Here's a little message to you, Going Gone. This video sums it up. You. Are. Wrong. Throughout the month of October, leading up to the debacle, in live streams, I had a few trolls try to fuck around with me, saying that I have no evidence of anything, trying to fuck around with me again, but I banned them all. It was only a few. I banned a bunch of asshats and trolls throughout this whole triathlon drama. Back to the debacle. He made a few claims that I knew he couldn't back up, that I knew were false, and the only thing that really triggered me was when he shot himself in the foot and gave me a link to try and confirm his confirmation bias, leading to the moment of truth. Hypocrisy was on the side who criticized me. It was just a Q&A link. It was stupid for him to do that. And so I just distanced myself from him after just going further back and forth after this shit pile. And then I made a video on November 5th, 2018, putting Going Gone in his place, comparing him to KWLM, a pigeon who just shits on the chessboard and strut around like it won anyway. So throughout the months of November, not a whole lot was happening. I was just finishing up recovering from this whole debacle, you know, while I was going through more of the BS, and then Will Kincaid showed up and responded to my Alex Jones video. And then that's what led him to disliking me. And throughout the month of December, me and Will Kincaid were going through back and forths with each other, while Will Kincaid was bitching about how every time I made a fucking video, I said it would be the last. And yet here he is doing the exact same damn thing. That's ironic. So, in early January, after 2019 rang in as the new year then, I made a video addressing this then to have been five month long drama. And then shortly after, they made their whole video just completely shitting on anything I say, going with conspiratorial talking points and trying to keep the conspiracy theory alive. Nothing really big or major happened in January, except for the You Lose series. Just like the Falsy of the Week series I started throughout November, and that's about it. I started the You Lose series with saying to Going Gone, you lost or you lose, and explained why and how. And then I did the exact same thing to EMC2103, addressing his cringy ass Wattpad story he made back in December. And then after this, Star Shadow fell out, even though he was never my friend in the first place. He stabbed me in the back. Went with their conspiracy theory, went with their conspiratorial talking point, and made a few dog shit response videos in an attempt to assassinate my character, which failed epically. Hello everybody, I am the fox with the chipped ear, and before I go through every one of Star Shadow Wolf's videos that responded to me, you know, from the last live response stream, I'm gonna get used to not stuttering as much. It'll get better every time I do a live stream response. So, after I go through every response that Star Shadow Wolf has made to me, I'm gonna note something. I'm gonna point something out. The thumbnail hasn't changed, but after I end the stream, I will hopefully change the thumbnail so it doesn't confuse other people. So sorry for that inconvenience. Well, let's begin. All right. Open up his channel in another tab. So let's look here. He's made four response videos to me. And you know what? Since it's really entertaining just to debunk him in a live stream response, then to just go back and forth and back and forth with videos, which technically this is my uh, second live stream response. As noted before, I'm gonna change the thumbnail of this stream 
because, you know, I couldn't change the thumbnail in the creator studio, so sorry about that. Without further ado, let's begin! Hello, Wolfpack, I am Star Shadow, and I want to give a message to the fox with the chipped ear. So this video isn't really going to be anything, like, properly scripted or anything like that. It's just going to be a response to a couple of his videos to him directly. If you want the context to what I'm going to be re um, talking about, I'll put a link to the Fox with the Chipped Ears channel, as well as EMC and Going Gone. I don't even know if Going Gone has a channel, though. In the description. Well, you could have responded to the videos where I made arguments, you know, in the position to prove that the roast game is fact. Like, the video where I've proven that the calories add up. Like, the recent video where I fact-check an ABC News article. Remember that? Well, you didn't do that, did you? You only had to respond to just a few videos because you just wanted to. By the way, I'm not being petty just by mentioning that. Let's continue. Um... So basically, we're just going to jump right into this. Alright, there's the fair use. So the video starts with 12 seconds of a fair use and notice and disclaimer. So my first thing is, since he's being pretty petty in this video, I'm going to be a little petty as well. <laughs> How is that me being petty? <laughs> You know, there were times where I've made videos criticizing Odin Wolf, and I had a disclaimer. Well, I didn't really have a disclaimer for that video criticizing Odin. You know what I mean? Like, any video at all I've made in the past, those videos still get false flagged. And even when I mention that, you still call me petty for no good reason, but just to project onto me. Oh, he responded to me. That means he must be acting petty towards me. Well, continuing on. Shorten that, dude. Five seconds is all you need. Nobody wants to sit through 12 seconds of a disclaimer. <laughs> See? He's petty. But I fixed that. So just fair use disclaimers are five seconds now. There. How do you like it now? Alright, guys. This is the final message to Going Gone. I want to get this shit out of the way before I can let this whole debacle slash drama be a thing of the past. So, I've been looking through my DeviantArt notifications, I found this comment, and I see Going Gone say this. Oh, hello, Brian. Kincaid, Xscape, and I had a suspicion you weren't the real artist of this beautiful piece. Nice job, by the way, one skylight one. So we tracked it down from beginning to end and found this. Mostly thanks to Kincaid, though. Nice job, asshole. Not only are you a conspiracy theorist, an egomaniac, but you're a thief as well. He could have put commas in that last part. And that's just me being petty. R really? Just go ahead and continue watching the video. First off, there's a punctuation error in your own comments. So here he goes with the first bit of pettiness calling out a punctuation error. So stupid. <laughs> Even if I'm an art thief, which I admit that I am, that doesn't address any arguments I made, or the evidence I presented, or the truth behind all my claims. You're right, it didn't address any of your claims or arguments about the Rose game. It wasn't meant to. It was meant to. Okay, <laughs> then why are you still making the ad hominem attack, then? Oh, it's not meant to address you. It was only meant to, you know, call you out for your bullshit, which there wasn't really any. <laughs> and to call out the fact that you are an art thief, as well as these other things, such as a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's just how dishonest he is. He's really that fucking dishonest. He has to, you know, call me a conspiracy theorist, which... Pretty much everyone knows that's not what you do if you want to address somebody's argument. You don't just want to attack the character of your opponent. I mean, I do know my fallacies, but come on. Don't be petty about that. Whatever. Not only have you proven my point by saying this from the whole debacle, quote-unquote. Whether or not the roast game is true, you're still a conspiracy theorist. Well, it was whether your roast game is true or not, but I just said it as whether or not the roast game is true, since how Going Gone said it in that comment during that whole debacle was really subjective, when it did not need to be subjective. 
but you doubled down on it and did it again. And no, I am not trying to reignite the drama. So here is my final message to Going Gone. Two words. You lose. You say that he lost, <laughs> yet you're the one who closed the discourse and blocked and banned him. <laughs> You're still claiming that he won. <laughs> you don't care about the debate. You only care about your own confirmation bias. That if I just stop talking to Going Gone or stop debating with him, that it's just going to automatically prove your point. That's your confirmation bias. And the fact that you don't even see that, or if you do see that, you don't care about that anyway. I mean, it's just stupid how you are that fucking dishonest. You have the motherfucking audacity to claim all these things about me and then strut around like you won anyway. Strut around like you're always right and I'm always wrong. Which, by the way, that is confirmation bias. Let's, let's move on. As soon as he disagreed with the roast game, <laughs> I'd say you lost the moment you closed that door. Even though... <laughs> you see how retarded you sound right now, Star Shadow? We haven't even finished this video, and instantly, this is how petty you are. So you can start shit for no good reason. All because you always wanted to have top filling for this whole drama, just so you can get attention out of it. I mean, this drama's dead, but I'm just doing a live stream response, just to top it all off. Though this wasn't really a debate, you had no case anyway that I'm a conspiracy theorist. You're only using that as a derogatory term just to discredit me. You're right, it wasn't a debate, because you closed the doors to a debate as soon as we disagreed with you. Then why'd you say he fucking won, you idiot? If it was just a waste of fucking time, then don't claim he won just because you side with him politically. Do you know how much of an ideologue you sound right now? Jesus, talk about, you know, the fact that you side with him just because he agrees with you. And you're trying to paint me out as this cuck, trying to make me out as some sort of, like, Steve Shives. But I'm not. I only block troll comments. I'm not trying to start shit with anyone. I was just merely proving my point. And going on in that whole debacle capped wasting my time with not even taking any of those links into account even though I had to delete those uh, links to the comments. By the way, that's not evidence that I'm hiding anything. Moving on. And yeah, you are a conspiracy theorist. It's not just a derogatory term. It is what you actually are. You are spreading lies as truth. Passing the roast game off as truth. You claim that people actually ate their children as Christmas roasts, and you cannot give any reasonable evidence to back up that claim. <laughs> any reasonable evidence? What do you mean, any reasonable evidence? Any evidence that tells you that you're right and that I'm wrong? If you haven't seen the videos, or if you have, but you had to lie about those videos that I made without addressing them. If you did not address the videos where I've argued that the roast game is fact, then that does not mean either going gone or you won anyway. So that has proven my point, that not just the roast game is fact, that you guys lost this whole debate in reality. I mean, not even four minutes and I'm already just debunking this shit out of your video. You are spreading a conspiracy theory. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing because it's that fucking funny. It's how salty you are, that you're the one claiming that I'm lying. Even though Going Gone is actually lying about me, and so are you and all the others that called me a conspiracy theorist. I mean, there is reasonable evidence to prove that the roast game's fact, that the calories add up, that the death toll fits with reality, as in counting off the deaths of, from any other cause of child deaths in America, and whatever's left afterwards after all those statistics... That's the answer I have. 977,280 children were slaughtered and eaten as Christmas roasts every single fucking year. And you're going to call that a lie? In spite of the fact that I have proven it? Man, you know, you have such a lack of self-awareness. It, it boggles my mind. It blows it. Continuing on. You have two choices. Either put up or shut the fuck up. 
Yeah. But he chose not to put up and to make claims without evidence. Then later on in the debacle, you resorted to ad hominem attacks, appeal to emotion, appeal to authority, special pleading, a straw man, and so on and so forth. Hey, going on. Remember these two words. You, you lose. And, I mean, that's that's not really hard to say. You lost going gone. Really? You thought one whole debacle slash quote unquote debate was going to prove anything? Yeah, it was a waste of time. But look at those videos I've made on my channel. If you look at them very carefully, go through every source, don't just say you went through every single source, but then deny the credibility of those videos by attacking my character, calling me a conspiracy theorist, a liar, and an art thief just to dismiss my arguments and my credibility anyway. I mean, that's what you've done months before. I'm the fox with the chip deer, signing the fuck out. Case <clears throat> closed. <laughs> I do not agree with, agree with the ad hominems or the attacks in any way, shape, or form. But, but why do you use ad hominem attacks if you thought that you disagree with using ad hominems? Seriously, if you disagree with just using ad hominems, why the fuck would you do it then? Or wait, am I just taking you out of context? L Seriously, let's let's figure it out. Continue. But they did present proper evidence to refute your claims, which you... <laughs> <laughs> Going gun, the one son of a bitch only gave me one source which I clicked through and it's like, what do people eat on Christmas? And it's like ham or turkey or shit. Even though I've debunked that claim before. You didn't care about that. You only cared about your own confirmation bias that even a contradiction to your own worldview would mean that I'm threatening you in a way where your self-confidence would be outnumbered. Let's continue watching the video. You did not have sufficient evidence to back up. You were the one who lost the debate. If you <laughs> You're still calling it a debate, even though it wasn't. That just proves your confirmation bias. I've said this multiple times before. You can even call it a debate. Well, that's pretty much the end of the first video. I'm going to move on to the next video and see what he has to say to EMC. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. But this time it's another video. <laughs> again with the 12 second disclaimer. We don't need it to be that long. Well, okay. Again, I fixed that mistake. Now with any response video, ramp video, or any video like that, I've shortened that. Don't let videos I made in the past get you to being so petty over just 12 seconds. You know, there's a lot of text in that fair use disclaimer. But just because I only, uh, you know, display it for 12 seconds, that doesn't mean that people are not gonna pause it and read it and then just play through it. I mean, some people won't even have the chance to read it fully without the disclaimer going away into the video, beginning the video, or playing the video. You know what I mean? I'm just going off a tangent. Continue. Seriously, five seconds is all you need. Cringy intro is cringy. Yeah, cringy intros and uh, cringy okay, guys. To put the final nail in the coffin of this drama, I have to make a final response to Escape 69. How am I gonna do this? You may ask. Remember the last time I roasted the shit out of Escape 69? Yes, I do remember that time, and you really didn't roast him. It was really cringe and bad. Oh, you're saying it's cringe and bad. I must be doing a great job. <laughs> oh, for those of you who don't know, Escape 69 is EMC. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're saying me roasting him was cringe and bad? While ironically just, you know, ignoring the fact that I actually did a great job in roasting him? No, seriously, take that into account. <laughs> oh, let's continue. Well, that's nothing compared to what I'm about to show you. Because I find this shit pretty fucking autistic. And I believe that he needs to be called out on it. I don't care if you use the it's just a joke card to deflect any criticism. I'm not trying to reignite the drama or start any more shit with you. It is called Brian's Esoteric Ecstasy, which was posted on December 11th. Now that is cringy. And <laughs> Esoteric the Free did not even consent to this troll making this shitty story on Wattpad. Plus, EMC is a troll. 2018. And the description reads... NSFW, lots and lots of smooch, smooch, slobber, slobber, yum, yum, kisses. <laughs> I misread that. I said, 
kisses instead of kissies. But that's okay, he laughs at that because he thinks it's funny. Oh yeah, only some shitty story that's about me and Esoteric the Free or Esoteric Entity kissing is funny. But when I roast the shit out of EMC, Will Kincaid, and, you know, somehow proven my point after all this, that's bad and cringy. You know, the hypocrisy with Star Shadow was pretty mind-blowing. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> Great with the NPC-style sense of humor. Oh, let's only laugh at Trump. Let's bash Trump. Oh, he's... Oh, yeah, he's a Nazi. He's a fucking racist. (laughs) Trump's an idiot. He was unfit for presidency. Just like that. But this time, it's only attacking my character. And that shit is not just unfunny, but it's uncalled for. That's fucking stupid. And it's cringy and bad. I can actually say that about this troll's fucking Wattpad story. Continuing. Okay. <laughs> All right. That, that, that's, that's a, a funny, funny joke, joke right there. there. You, you told, told me he was writing, writing that. that. That's, that's funny. funny. I mean, that's <laughs> obviously <laughs> not meant to be taken seriously. Well, of course not. But I responded to it anyway. <laughs> but... <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Uh, and all, all I have, have to say is, is really? really? Look at this what shit. The fuck, dude. You really you went that far? <gasps> I don't I even fucking know how Esoteric the Freeze is gonna react to this. I just, I just don't. don't. It's, it's fucking retarded. Plus, it's cringy as fuck. Who would disagree with that? Who would disagree with the fact that that Wattpad story is cringy as fuck? <laughs> It's meant to be cringy. It's- yes. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to be cringy, but then why would you make that Wattpad story if you're only complaining that my content was cringy? Fucking hypocrite. It's meant to be retarded. That's the whole point of the joke. <laughs> okay, the audio's good? You okay, I'm just this checking. is cringy and retarded, when pretty, pretty much everything, everything that comes out of your mouth is the same way. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Talking about the salt. Talking about, like, you know, being ignorant and not even taking anything into account because fuck that or else there goes my entire position that Brian Mullins the Fox is a conspiracy theorist out of the fucking window. And there goes my ego. Fuck me. Who in their right mind would write shit like this? Only someone who tries to be edgy in spite of the fact that he knows that he was one of the two people that were responsible for raiding my former Discord server. Okay, those two are completely unrelated. Him trying to be edgy and him raiding your Discord server. Oh, yeah, you're just gonna be apologetic about them raiding my Discord server. Oh, being edgy and raiding your Discord server are two different things. Really? Did I just contradict myself there? No, you fucking retard. He was trying to be all edgy with the autism memes and so many others, raiding my Discord server. So those two things are not different. They're not completely separate from one another. They coexist with one another. Him being edgy and raiding my Discord server. You see, you just gotta deny reality. You just gotta deny what happened. So it just best suits your narrative that I'm a conspiracy theorist. Completely unrelated things, so I don't know why you would talk about them like they're related. Second of all, he was trying to be edgy because he wanted to make an edgy joke. Okay, why just say it was two different things? Oh, it's just, it's totally different of him just being edgy and raiding your Discord server. You 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 just said it as if you're saying that you were implying that he didn't when he did. I'm just making sure that you know about the lack of self-awareness you have, Star Shadow. Alright, he was just trying to make an edgy joke. You know him since you've talked to him before this whole thing started. We used to be friends. You know he has that edgy kind of humor. And even before that, he... A rather cringy sense of humor. Called me a pussy because I flagged one of his videos for him humiliating me on purpose just to get me to stop posting about the roast game. Like, you know, intentionally humiliating me like that? That's funny. But when I respond to you and criticize you, that's not okay? If I just roasted the shit out of EMC like I did and roasted the shit out of Will Kincaid, that's not okay. You know, when you did the same shit to me, that was funny as hell and that was all a-okay? Motherfucking hypocrite. I think he called you that for doing that because 
it was it wasn't trying to get you to stop making videos about the roast game. Well, I guess it kind of was because he was trying to refute your quote unquote evidence. And he fucking failed. You know, one time when I, I used to be in Shane Killian server once before I left or something. You know, like, why 12 dislikes? You know, this video was made by a troll. I mean, other people outside of your in-group think that this was a troll just trying to refute it. But literally contradicting himself way too many times to count. Like, way too many times than I care to remember. Because it is false, and he can easily do so. Oh, yeah. Just... You know, siding with him and just his failure of an attempt to debunk that video where I've proven that the calories add up is surely just debunking my video. Just pointing out the amount of fucking hypocrisy, confirmation bias, and your uh, will to lie about me to other people while accusing me of doing it himself. You flagging his content, ju that content just proves that you do want to just silence him for proving you wrong. <laughs> confirmation bias again <laughs> it's just how fucked do you have to be just so you can say that you guys as a fucking collective or group that you're always right and anybody like me or anybody else outside of your in-group are wrong automatically and anything that they will ever say is automatically invalid and you're conservative Ah, <sighs> it has nothing to do with our political views or economical views or whatnot. Continuing. You can't take the fact that you got proved wrong. <laughs> uh, do you know how much a turkey weighs? <laughs> Why did he say that it's not based on weight? Oh, I could just put a ton of Panera bread rolls onto a plate and the, how many calories just wouldn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what What if people put sauce on their ham? Oh, what about taking off the fat? He's just avoiding the point and contradicting himself and making a complete troll out of himself like he essentially meant to be. Okay, let's continue. If you just try to delete the evidence that you were... Delete the evidence? Delete the fucking evidence? Who's calling me a conspiracy theorist? Who's calling me a fucking conspiracy theorist? You are! Because you're claiming that I'm hiding evidence, deleting evidence, in spite of the fact that just humiliating someone just because someone else disagrees with me is just automatically proven that I'm wrong. That's not how it works. You can't just go along with your confirmation bias. I, I It's like I keep saying confirmation bias more times than I care to even remember in this one stream. And hide it from everyone else. As, As I, I explained, explain, I didn't hide anything from anybody else. It was just him, you know, humiliating me, belittling me for just proving my point and him failing to do the same. But trying to debunk my video just didn't really go well for him. In the video, <laughs> issuing <laughs> five months long drama. And yes, the class with the shitty Rasili is an abuse of title. Because, because not, not only were you trying to discredit me, you, you fail miserably. miserably. I had to add on to that. Belittling your opponent is not addressing your opponent's argument. It only makes you guys out to be just a bunch of fucking idiots that can't even fucking take the mere fact that families ate their own children as Christmas roasts. You just have to deny that. You're denying reality. You're denying calories. You're denying the simple plausibility of the roast game theory and how plausible it is. Just like the theory of evolution, like I've said before. But, but you, you attempt, attempt to humiliate me, and you do so <clears throat> intentionally just, just to get me to stop. It uh, is abusive? I, I think, think it's just a silly little title. title. I think it's just a silly little title. So I can make excuse to whatever shit we do. Oh, so we want just- we just want to be edgy. Subscribe to me. I'm like edgy as fuck, you know? And I have like some sort of anime icon as a profile picture that I don't even fucking own. Oh, but this furry's an art thief- or this guy's an art thief and he should be the only one that no one else should ever be trusted. Yeah, calling out your hypocrisy is just bad and cringy to you guys. But only when you guys do the same shit, it's okay when you do it. He puts on his videos, like all of his videos, and he doesn't fail miserably. He actually succeeds pretty well. <laughs> only if you're a fucking retard. <laughs>
How's that for, like, a comeback? Him belittling me? Me not even doing the same to you, you know? I'm not even belittling you at all. I'm just simply criticizing you for the fact that you're this dishonest and that you could just simply go with what some troll said on the internet, like saying, oh, how much does a turkey weigh? Because, you know, the amount of calories in our food does not, it's not based on weight. And how do we measure the fucking calories, you fucking idiot? God damn. The fact that you guys were this salty just makes it even funnier. He may seem like an idiot, but he can be smart when he wants to. And I think he did a very good job in that video. <laughs> he did a shit job. That's not him being smart. That's him just being an idiot. Learn to think outside your own confirmation bias. Learn to think outside of the box and stop being so close-minded. You can't. It's because you trapped yourself in your own rabbit hole. In your own echo chamber. But calling me a pussy right before you invited a few toxic shitposters to raid my Discord server when you were a part of the raid alongside with Slowpoke Garcia? Okay, this really gets me angry. So oh yeah, because that just really gives detail on how edgy you guys were trying to be. Oh, and I remember, I remember the timeline of those events. Before he raided my Discord server, he called me a pussy. But then he's proven himself to be the pussy because I don't do that shit. I don't go that low just to harass somebody because I disagree with them. So like, just why not? Why not just only claim that we're right and him always being wrong? Maybe that's just not edgy enough. Or maybe that's just not edgy at all. Opal Garcia was <clears throat> not part of that raid. He was not trying to start anything. He was not trying to get involved. He was in my server when all this shit happened. I mean, I've mirrored this video I made months ago in a channel, like, it's called my commentary channel or something, but it's not big, it's tiny. It's a tiny channel with four subs or something. It's shown Slowpoke Garcia sharing a link to my Discord server to those who would raid it. Like, lying about the fact that they've raided my Discord server, including Slowpoke Garcia? It's just really ironic that you had to deny that. I mean, Slowpoke was in my server the time it happened. Then I had to ban them all. Because you know what? You know why? Because I don't like being harassed. You don't just harass and belittle your opponent because you disagree with them. Who's the real pussy? And you blaming him for this raid really gets me angry. It's because it's the truth. And you know what? The truth hurts like a bitch. But who's the bigger bitch? You or the truth? Has to be you. Because yeah. he has Sorry. nothing to do with this. He's <laughs> a good man and a good friend. He doesn't do that kind of stuff. Talk about serious white knighting. No, seriously, talk about serious white knighting. You're defending Slowpoke in spite of the fact that he was a part of this whole damn thing while he was in my server at the time. And you just white knighting for Slowpoke and going on and all these people? It just means that you're acting this petty just so you can try to suit your narrative. You know that. Like I said before, you were friends with us before. I don't know about the other guys. I don't know about EMC or, or going gone, but I... Why'd you white knight for them anyway? Why'd you side with them? It's because you wanted to. No, for a fact that Soul Park Garcia would not do something like that. Just really meant that you've shown your true colors. As a bitchy, edgy tryhard who fails miserably to admit <laughs> that he's wrong. Again, <laughs> he's not wrong. You're the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to project. <laughs> just after I said that, in response, you project the fact that you guys are wrong onto me simply because I was belittled by some troll on the internet, by some edgy tryhard kid on the internet that only got famous... And that video was called just Spider-Man Says the N-Word. I mean, is that really anything relevant? It's just a shitty video. I don't make videos like, oh, I'm going to say the N-Word because that's racist. And, you know, I'm moving off to an irrelevant topic, but I'm going to go back to the video now. You're the one who can't admit that you're wrong. <laughs> and exposing myself in the process. I've got two words for you, Xscape system. You ironically changed your channel name. You lose. Not only that you exposed your- I know you're just gonna <clears throat> use that. It's just a joke card to deflect any criticism from your shitty story that you wrote. But it's only obvious that you lost. And I know I've done my last response to Going Gone and Wilkin Cade. 
therefore making this the final response to you, essentially putting the final nail in the coffin of this drama. And yes, <laughs> I still remember debunking your shitty-ass long video called The Roast Game is Fact. I couldn't believe that you would take everything so fucking seriously. And you know what the funny thing is? He didn't give a single link. He didn't even link my fucking video. He, di he didn't link my fucking channel. He didn't, he didn't put any link in his description. So his entire video essentially held no water. Yet overreact to everything that is shown to you, including proof that the calories add up. Hey, Xscape69, <laughs> remember these two words. You lose. He didn't lose. You're the one that lost. <laughs> this was just... This was just the longest... No, wait, that's not the longest video. This one is. <laughs> just by, like, 13... Or, well, 23 seconds. <laughs> well, thankfully, I corrected myself as quickly as I could. Again, you're the one who closed the door to... Proper discourse and proper discussion. <laughs> You're still taking it seriously. Way too damn seriously, obviously. <laughs> About this topic. You're the one who cut us off. You're the one who blocked and banned up. And he blocked and banned up. <laughs> I blocked you guys. It's because... You were harassing me. When someone's harassed on the internet or on Discord, they have every fucking right to block people like you if you're such a problem to a person like me. So you're not even addressing any argument. You're just saying that I'm wrong because I was harassed. That's fucking bullshit. He didn't ironically change his channel name. He didn't do it for the reason you think he did. He did it because he changes his name very often. He moves from one name to another and... Almost a, on almost a weekly basis. <laughs> you know, the difference between when he changed it to EMC and the time that he changed it to Xscape 69 after just Xscape were months in between. There were just months in between. You're right. That story wasn't necessary, but it was funny. I didn't read it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> just the title alone was enough to make me laugh. Oh, yeah, just the, the title. Just a joke card wouldn't be used to... Oh, yeah, just because it has my name in it, just because it has Esso's name in it. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Oh, it's like when a late-night show host, you know, makes a fucking skit where it has the word Trump in it and just bashing Trump all the time. Yeah, just like that. It's like, so funny to me, isn't it? Not. It would just be stating what it actually is. A joke. You can criticize the joke all you want, but it was still only a joke. The calories make. <laughs> <laughs> You're still deflecting the criticism anyway. It add up, but who do you want? But it was still only a joke. The calories may add up, but who cares? You have not provided any evidence. <laughs> <laughs> See? His confirmation buys again. <laughs> the calories may add up, but it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> You would be admitting that you're wrong. And the fact that you're this biased <laughs> just proves my point simply and surely. Any historical evidence that people ate their children as Christmas roast? Give us something, anything, arrests, missing persons reports, something historical, some form of historical documentation that children were going missing and later being found eaten. <laughs> what missing reports <laughs> they're called death certificates oh but why why does why does that matter right because everyone like would see that i'm a conspiracy theorist give me a break get the fuck out of here really <laughs> get the hell out of here well what are you gonna say oh, any de any like missing reports or something you know police reports if cannibalism, if there's no law against cannibalism in the United States itself, then there shouldn't have to be a missing persons report. Because it's not a conspiracy. You fucking potato. It's not a fucking conspiracy. Okay? 
All right, we're almost through our video. I'm back, and yes, that was sort of quick. I had to make it quick. So we're almost through the uh, his first video in response to me. We're going to go through all of them. It's going to be a long stream, so hope you like it. So throughout both of these videos, you show that you are a hypocrite, petty, and completely retarded. <laughs> I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> You're continuously making me laugh. You're making me laugh every time you call me a, a, an insult. I find it cute. What if this stream gets flagged down because I, you know, think that you insulting me is cute just, you know, to, you know, respond to your videos through every last second of them? <clears throat> you admit to being a thief. You give retarded claims. <laughs> you just this is just statements from his incredulity. And you say that we lose the debate even though you are the one who closed the door to discussion a long time ago. As soon as you closed that door, you were the one that lost. <laughs> so And you're still you're still implying that it's a debate. It's because you're that biased. It goes all the way back to confirmation bias. I think it's sort of circular though. How about if you really want to win this, come with facts, proper facts, <clears throat> to prove us wrong. The calories adding up <clears throat> has nothing to do with this. <laughs> it has most to do with the roast game itself. I mean, come on. I've just debunked an ABC News article. If you watch that video and you still don't care... Why'd you still call me a conspiracy theorist? It's because you're a dishonest little chicken shit that can't even take a, a remote bit of criticism without calling me a dick over it. Okay, you <clears> can <throat> bring real evidence. Documentation. Historical <clears throat> documents that prove that this happened. Now, it, it really boils down to just either say what we want you to say or shut the fuck up. No matter if you actually bring evidence against their arguments or their false narrative, they won't care about facts at all. They would still call me a conspiracy theorist. It's because they're that fucking biased. Yep, that's that's just basically the end of his first video. Alright, let's go through his next video, which is pretty much the longest of his four videos. We're gonna go through it, all of them. I mean, this is my first time just going through all these four videos in a stream ever. So let's go through it. Hello, my beautiful pack. I'm Star Shadow, and welcome back to the response video. Yeah, the same person that called me a fucking hypocrite steals art from somebody who didn't even give any fucking credits to it. And now, I'm the fucking hypocrite? Get that shit out of here. You're the biggest hypocrite of them all. Just have to point that out, you fucking pussy. Today we're going to be looking at a video <clears throat> I recently posted. Not mentioned it. What an honor. So, anyway, let's jump right into it. Uh, yep, it's going with the fair use. <laughs> Same shit as last time. Oh, are you now? Yeah. That would be good. This is just a whole lot of reading straight from Wikipedia, which if you really want to read the whole thing, I'll put the links in the description. So what? There was still context in that Wikipedia article that you somehow conveniently left out. That was where he cherry-picked. So, he would just respond to anything I said after just cherry-picking that part out. So, he loses by default by taking my whole video, pretty much, out of context. No, it isn't different. Slaughtering a child as Christmas roast is murder. <laughs> <laughs> but that still falls under cannibalism, nonetheless. <laughs> which is defined as the unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. And the fact that cannibalism was involved does not mean they can't be charged with murder for the slaughtering of the child. What do you mean it's murder? If cannibalism is not illegal itself, why would you characterize it and label it as murder? Oh, because won't somebody please think of the children? I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm just saying that he's using an emotional argument. As I pointed out before... <laughs> Making the death certificate required. I'll have a separate video addressing this in greater detail in the description of this video. <laughs> well, he's only made like a story video just to prove me wrong about Albert Fish, which I will get into later in the stream. They don't just kill them for no reason. That would be filicide. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Before I play his response, I actually made a good point there, you know? Oh, nobody would ever do that. If families actually ate their own children, they're not true families. They're not actual families. They're just little straw men of your conspiracy theory. Get that shit out of here. All right, let's hear what you have to say. What are you <clears throat> saying that no family would do that? There are some pretty screwed up families that do some very screwed up things in this world. <laughs> It's not a perfectly innocent world. We live in a very fucked up world as we speak. <laughs> All right, continue. However, parents eating their children for Christmas roast for not believing in Christmas is a pretty specific scenario. It is highly unlikely that families have ever done that. Based on his argument from incredulity, based on the fact that just denying any other video, just calling it cringy and retarded, is just a simple way to debunk everything I said. Just ignore it and just, you know, call it cringy and bad. Why don't you address those videos I made proving my point, essentially. You didn't respond to that. You didn't care about that anyways. So why you act like you care now? If they have, it is extremely uncommon. <clears throat> extremely uncommon. <laughs> Extremely uncommon. Really, I've proven the death toll. You just watch that video. If you have, then you would know that you would find yourself in denial. And that's really fucked up for you just to be in denial like this. You would need some fucking mental help. It commonly happened like you were making it out to me. Wow, you really do love your fallacies, don't you, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so myself, <laughs> after just criticizing you and proving you wrong, boy, do you like your fallacy so much. Urgh. That's how butthurt he is. Well, okay. <laughs> Let's see how he responds. You are referencing an urban dictionary definition that you almost certainly added yourself. Red herring. You made the sources yourself, so it must be false. Red herring. You gotta love it when dishonest cucks like this just throw out a red herring. This doesn't give it any more credibility than you just saying it off the top of your head. At the top of my head? That I'm the only one that just made it? Just to say that therefore everything I just said was wrong? You know, that's really hypocritical of you since your confirmation bias I've shown and proven to the whole wide world of the internet. You feel like you're the one that's in the right to criticize me essentially doing the same thing you're doing. How do you know 18,568,322 children were slaughtered as Christmas roast? How do you know the name of the child? How do you know the house? How are you using math to find the names? Who else thinks this sounds like one of those equations to guess the age of your friends and make them think you're cool? That's a bad analogy. <laughs> oh, it's a very accurate way of finding when the child was slaughtered and all, all those details. I've proven that death toll. Watch the fucking video. Just look through my channel and find it. Watch it. If you're still in denial or in your own echo chamber with confirmation bias, don't claim that I'm lying or else you're a hypocrite magical math skills. That is a very inaccurate way of finding the height of a victim. What do you mean, inaccurate? Explain. You can't just say it's inaccurate and then just dismiss it. You gotta explain yourself. If you don't explain yourself, then your quote-unquote counter-argument there has just been left null and void. Or it has been rendered null and void. Let's continue. Another thing, this whole straw man saying that it's inaccurate to measure the slaughter stain to get the height of the child, even when I never claimed that every single stain represented the height of the child. <laughs> That's a straw man right there. Let's continue. But that's just a theory. A conspiracy theory. If you're in denial, if you're losing the argument, just attack the character of your opponent and dismiss any argument he says just so you can, you know, belittle him and ignore anything that comes out of my mouth. Because he's a lying piece of shit. One problem with that analogy. The theory of evolution has actual credible evidence that it is fact. <laughs> Oh, so it's a bad analogy because you can't accept the facts on both sides of this analogy. One side is evolution, the other is the roast game. You only have to only accept the part, the fact that evolution's the only one that has credibility since you're ironically denying any credibility of the roast game, which it has credibility and it holds water and it's based solely on reality math logic and reason it's not like i'm just belittling you or anything like that 
The Rose game has nothing but useless math and retarded claims. Yeah, Just really? Just saying that the ro- retarded claims. <laughs> if you're really wanting to address my arguments, address my fucking arguments. Don't just dismiss them and just only mention the fact that the calories add up and that's it. As you're willfully ignorant at this point. Roast game is fact because it can be explained by the roast game theory with evidence and valid observation. Not just that, but you know, the amount of times I've debated that topic. And it seems to hold some water. And butthurt trolls on debate.org deplatformed me because of that. Well, way to go with siding with those people, huh? Or am I just attacking your character? Well, I'm not doing that at all. <laughs> You're lumping me in with Alex Jones. You do know that, right? Ah, huh. but it's only okay when you do it. I'm not the person to attack your character. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just pointing out that a conservative like you is in absolutely no position just to take the moral high ground. Because people politically or personally agree with you. You're just bandwagoning. You know, you can't just bandwagon. It's just not how, you know, actual discussions and debates or anything like that work. Oh, this is where I mentioned. It's not <clears throat> like I'm trying to reignite the drama at all. So, let me get this straight. <clears throat> I'm lying to people in spite of the fact that I do show evidence, the sources I cite, proof <clears throat> that the calories add up, regardless if you think that doesn't matter. Public records aren't automatically mandatory for every single child that died. No, you are lying to people by using sites and sources that are created by you, making them unusable as sources and evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Still going back to that red herring you made earlier in this video. <laughs> you just gotta stick to that red herring for some reason, don't you? But not the remainder majority of my sources that I put in every description box of those videos. Pretty much. You can't just resort to a red herring and ignoring actual evidence and context, historical context, that would prove you to be in the wrong. As for these deaths... Death certificates would be required because they would have been murdered for the purpose of cannibalism. You're still lumping in cannibalism with murder. How dishonest, how disingenuous do you have to be just to go out of your way and make that argument? Oh, cannibalism is murder. Whoa, won't somebody please think of the children and help ignore this conspiracy theorist liar in a shill that believes that families ate their children for Christmas. You know, it would have only been ironic if you didn't attack my character, but you did. You, you attacked my character just like Going Gone did. Just like Will Kincaid did. Just like all these douchebags in your own circle did. <laughs> How would an entire family, mother, father, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, remain silent when they kill the kids? <laughs> I never said they did! <laughs> Just... <laughs> Did I ever say, you know, let's go back to the video. Did I ever say that every parent got rid of the death certificates of every child that was slaughtered? I never said that. So you're making this whole straw man up that I'm just saying that families are just covering this up silently. This is just fucking ridiculous. Not to mention neighbors, friends, teachers, and other people who are actively in this child's life who would eventually find out due to wondering where the child is once they went missing. <laughs> You're such a moral busybody. It's ridiculous. You can't just use arguments from emotion and then accuse me of committing a fallacy fallacy. You've done that in the last video that you responded to me with. Let's continue. Yes, you are. Douchebag. Says the guy who thinks it was common practice to murder children and eat them as Christmas roast until 2017. But I'm not attacking your character, am I? You piece of shit. I'm not. You attack my character and then you accuse me of being paranoid? You fucking hypocrite. What I've said was true, by the way. And you overreacted to that and said, Wait, you're the one that's paranoid, Brian. As you're just projecting onto me. Yeah, what you just did is prove my point. Moving on. No, we're bringing up facts and evidence that very easily destroy your arguments. Or the fact that you're so self-unaware and so fucking biased that you feel like you want to throw ad hominem attacks just so you can be edgy. You literally refused to address my arguments. You literally refused in the first fucking video. You refused to address my goddamn arguments. You're not the one to tell me that I'm just refusing, you know, to fucking respond or anything like that. I never said I refused. I, I never said that you were a conspiracy theorist at all. I never called you a conspiracy theorist. I'm only pointing out the fact that you're paranoid by attacking my character and projecting onto me, which proves my point anyway. What audience? I'm not <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> 
<laughs> See? Their claims hold no water. Oh, Brian lied to his audience. What audience? You just contradicted yourself again. <laughs> Let's continue on. Yes, you are. You falsely took down EMC's video because he disagreed with you and did a great job of dismantling your entire argument. Cherry picked example. Wow. You see how biased you are? Somebody mad we calling him out. Oh no. Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad because you're lying about me. And that art you stole looks shitty as fuck. Anime's gay! Just kidding. <laughs> hey, that's me! The <laughs> you unimportant fuck. In an act of desperation. Desperation? What am I desperate for? You're desperate for attention! You're asking this now? You could have just... You could have just said that you weren't desperate and that you've refuted everything I said. Listen to your cringy ass talking right now and see how fucking ridiculous that sounds. I mean, it's not like I'd be gaining any audience off of you. You don't have an audience. <laughs> What do you mean I have no audience? You have an audience? <laughs> but that's just like a non sequitur because, hey, we like debunking his bullshit with evidence. <laughs> he thinks I'm shifting the goalpost. What a fucking psychopath. As I stated in the last video, those who have not seen the entire drama <clears throat> would most likely not get what I was saying. Sammy was one of those people. Again, if anyone doesn't understand what the drama is about and what's been happening... Links to EMC, Will Kincaid, and Brian's channels will be in the description. Funny, most people actually said it was good. <laughs> Only those in your in-group. And as of right now in this live stream, I'm debunking the shit out of your videos. All of them. Drama whore. Lol, you were attacking my friends. Who are correct in their claims? <laughs> Cause you're a conspiracy theorist, Brian. Look at this dumbass furry. <laughs> Hashtag gas furries. Fucking piece of shit. So I retaliated. Kind of an alliance type thing, I guess. <laughs> Just what? 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 You think that you're always right, but you're claiming that I'm lying to people. Still proving my point. I would have done the same for you if we were still friends and you were correct. I honestly don't like drama, but I've had enough of your BS. You can't say you don't like drama. Nobody can say that. <laughs> I'm laughing all the time. It's because your videos are this fucking dumb. Seriously. And you're calling my videos dumb. So anybody that's not your friend is automatically wrong. You just stated it as you were implying that, which is just fucking retarded. We weren't <clears throat> lying about you. And no, I will not concede to such insanity. Such insanity does not go well. It does not fit with my narrative. It does not fit with my confirmation bias. It's nothing that we ever agree on. Ever. So it must be ignored or denied. And he must be a conspiracy theorist. And he is. He's a lunatic. Won't somebody please think of the children? Also, Star Shadow Wolf, stop being so effing petty about the fair use opening. People shouldn't necessarily have a fair use disclaimer to be about five seconds long or shorter, because even if people do see this disclaimer, some will still flag the video regardless. That's true. If this has been a well-constructed commentary slash rant video, the truth is, I've been false flagged before for criticizing KWLM, a debate.org troll. It effing sucked. I had to wait three months for that strike to expire, and when it finally did, I decided to prove my point, and to this day, I have pro proven it once and for all. If you still want to deny this, even though it is true, just know that you are willfully ignorant. Exactly! <laughs> that, that's just me pointing out your flaws. The flaws in your argument, as of this live stream. <laughs> Talk about these videos not aging well. Stop being so petty, says the one who pointed out a punctuation error in a comment under a photo on DeviantArt. <laughs> You said that you were going to be a little petty, too. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not. <laughs> this is hilarious. This would probably be like my longest stream response ever on this channel. Let's continue. So not only are you a conspiracy theorist, a thief, and petty, you're also a hypocrite. 
I was only pointing out that it doesn't need to be so long. All those claims that you just made all been refuted in this live stream. None of the same fucking bullshit lies should ever be repeated by anyone else who are indoctrinated in their own confirmation bias and their in-group. Have it in there to make sure you're in the right and that people understand that what you use in your videos is fair use. But don't make it so long. A lot of people have been false flagged before and it sucks that this happens to anyone. But that is the state of YouTube right now. And having an 8 to 12 second disclaimer won't change that. Anyway. So why are you claiming that I'm petty? <laughs> I'm not the one being petty. If that's what happens on YouTube all the time. You're only being petty because that was the way I shown the fair use disclaimer. I mean, it's not that hard. That was another bullshit video I went through. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Alright, well, story time to prove Brian wrong? Nope, just a story about Alberfish from an entirely different time than just after 1990, according to Wikipedia, like, about the whole thing about death certificates with New York State. State, after 1998. 1998 and 1928 are entirely different eras, entirely different years, completely different times. One time you're in the roaring 20s, and one time you're at, you're close to the end of the fucking millennium. Or you're, you're at the end of the fucking third millennium. I have this confirmation bias. You're making these bullshit arguments just so you can come to your conclusion out of confirmation bias. So, I'm going to skip this bullshit video and move on to the next. Alright, so... Alright, let's, 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 let's get this shit over with. Let's do it. So, this video is going to be unscripted. And my last video on Brian Mullins is just going to be pretty much talking about everything that I've missed so far, so... And that's when he realized that he was so stuck in the loop of his own in-group. That's when he first realized that his head was so far up his ass that even if he was shown proof or evidence or historical data, bloodstains or anything like that, he would still deny it knowingly just because it doesn't suit his narrative or the narrative that they've been pushing for that long of a time for like five months or something well it's time that you finally admit that you're wrong well let's just keep this over with <clears throat> so first up is uh brian's claim that i'm an art thief and a hypocrite and um apparently i am okay then Thank you for fucking admitting it, you lying piece of shit! Because my friend who apparently made this profile pic that I use now, it turns out, stole the art. <laughs> that, website, that website is in Brian's video. Or description. And, uh, basically, it's a picture that was uploaded in 2016. And I just thought... Because he was my friend, he would steal art, <clears throat> he makes art professionally, so why did he <clears throat> steal it? And apparently, he did. So now, I'm working on getting my own profile pic commission. Which, currently, his profile picture is pretty much no different than this, or the other profile picture he stole. So, just getting that out of the way. So hopefully by sometime next week <laughs> that will be a thing and I will have a stolen profile picture and I just have to actually thank Brian Mullins for pointing this out without him who I could have gone a long time having this stolen profile picture and thanks to him I no longer am going to have this stolen art Another thing I have to address is when uh, Brian called out in my video that I skipped a whole part of the video that gave context. And uh, to that, uh, I have to say that yes, I probably should have put it in there like just for a few seconds. Well, for, free, for a few seconds? How about the entire time I was reading? The entire time I was reading. You only had to do that because either you couldn't upload longer than 15 minutes, or if you could possibly upload longer than 15 minutes, which you can't, you would still lie about it anyways and skip it. Just the articles it's for people to pause and read if they want. <clears throat> and even though I said I was going to put the articles in the description, I forgot to do so. 
they are now in there and um, that kind of thing is not gonna happen again it better the fuck not if I do some probably call me on office as soon as possible next <clears> up <throat> is the uh, Elder Fish video that you commented on the, um, well first like I've said earlier in the stream after I criticized him about his video and just saying that his video sucked he responded with oh you're a dick brian as like as if that's like a mature way to respond to criticism just throwing insults it's like totally proof that they're not biased at all that video <clears throat> he said was just appealing to <clears throat> I, i've shown this earlier in the stream and i've proven it and that i didn't uh mention certain things on purpose uh because it took away from what i was trying to say and proved me wrong when uh, that's not true, I put only murder in there because when he was tried, he was only tried for the cannibalization of the one child. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just said he also murdered. Oh, so he mainly got sentenced to death, mainly on the cannibalism thing. That's not how it works. That's not the only reason why he was sentenced to death. There were other things, not just cannibalism. So you have to leave that out. You're addressing the fact that you've left this out on purpose? To be a dishonest little weasel that you are? Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being fucking honest for once. So that was all they had sufficient evidence for. <clears throat> um, he was tried and convicted of murder in that <clears throat> case. And the whole point of that video was to prove that, yes, if someone cannibalized an entire child, that would be considered murder, because you would have to kill the child to be able to cook and eat the child. <laughs> See? He didn't admit that he was just using an emotional argument just to only mention the cannibalization of a child that Albert Fish committed instead of also murder and all the others. In fact... I'll go right now, and I will show you. Albert Fish. See? Other crimes. You know, there were other crimes, too. You know that? Known like this. But the suspected ones are here. And that's it. So just only pointing out Grace as just a victim of murder is not the same as just pointing out Grace Bud as a victim of cannibalism. And only cannibalism. Which you should have done, but then you would only be dishonest because you're taking the rest of the context out of, you know, Albert Fish's criminal history. Let's move on. That was the point of that video. This is the post-recording Star Shadow adding something here. Um... One thing I forgot to mention was that Brian uh, put a, a link in the description to the Albert Fish thing. Yes, I did. And kind of trying to make it out like I didn't put it in there. I never said that. I've only linked the Wikipedia article instead of the article you linked because the source of the article you linked was not secure and Wikipedia was. And that's it. Just continuing on. When I put pretty much the exact same article in there, it was just formatted a little differently, things were placed. But where were the other sources on uh, that source of the article? You know, Wikipedia is not just some sort of different formatting. There's links and references and citations right at the end of that article. And what did the article you linked have? Not really much. You see, there's a big difference. Wikipedia is a more reliable source than the source you gave me. Different order. It was the same website, it was just a slightly different URL, and it was weird. But it's the same exact article, reads the exact same way, word for word, and it's in the description. And I encourage you guys to um, click on it and read it for yourself. So I wasn't hiding anything. I wasn't trying to hide that he was a serial killer. I only mentioned the murder part because that's what he was. No, you only mentioned the cannibalism part. Did you really have to word that differently? What a slimy fucking weasel you are. Executed for. Next is him calling out uh, another fallacy. And 
here comes the hypocrisy alert. This is where it gets to the point where he doesn't even care about him being wrong anymore. Or him being right anymore. He just only cares that he could just dismiss anything I say and then falsely accuse me of committing the fallacy fallacy. I have a script pulled up. Uh, it is supposed to make some kind of going off of those. It's kind of scripted, but not really. Anyway, um, basically, I was going to talk about how he's also committing a fallacy. It's called the fallacy fallacy. Just because I committed cherry picking. Well, did he accuse me of cherry picking? Pretty much, since he's claiming that he's not hiding the evidence, but I am. Or something similar to that. The fallacy fallacy, or the argument from fallacy, which is the formal fallacy of analyzing an argument and inferring that since it contains a fallacy, its conclusion must be false. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's pretty much pointing out fallacies and bad arguments. Don't give me that shit. You called me a hypocrite. You committed actual fucking fallacies. Fallacies that people commit every fucking day. So you're essentially accusing me of cherry picking? And now you're going to have the audacity to claim that I committed the fallacy fallacy? Really? I mean, that's just ironic. It is also called the argument to logic, the fallacies fallacy, and the bad reasons fallacy. Basically, it's when you call out fallacies so much and disregard arguments because they contain fallacies that your argument becomes a fallacy. Never did such thing. I've addressed your arguments. I've debunked pretty much every single one of your fucking arguments in this live stream as we speak right the fuck now. Boy, this video did not age well. And look at when this was posted. Nearly a month ago. Nearly a month ago, and it already does not age well. I mean, it doesn't age well at all, for fuck's sake. Wow. I'm just pointing that out. So, I had a little joke in there. Good job, buddy. Fallacizing your way to fallacy king. Another thing I wanted to address was um, that Brian Mullins called me out for skipping an entire part of the video. That was the part where he cherry-picked. He conveniently took that out, either because he couldn't upload a video longer than 15 minutes, or if he actually had the ability to, he would have taken that out anyways. That's cherry picking. You're accusing me of cherry picking. So, well, Brian's accusing me of cherry picking, but he commits the fallacy fallacy. That doesn't prove your point. Even if I said that, that you did not accuse me of cherry picking, it wouldn't change the fact that you committed the fallacy fallacy yourself. <laughs> That doesn't make you correct for just claiming that I committed the fallacy fallacy. I will show you. It's in a Wikipedia article. Okay, let's go here. <clears throat> All right, here's the objection. That one can invoke the argument from fallacy against the position does not prove one's own position either, as this too would be an argument from fallacy itself, as in the case of Joe's argument or something in the article, or for this stream in the context of your arguments. It doesn't prove your point. It doesn't prove you right because you claim that I committed the fallacy fallacy, or that even if you never accused me of cherry picking, that wouldn't change the fact that you committed the fallacy fallacy yourself. You do know that, right? I'm just pointing that out. This video, when he skips most of my arguments in my videos. Oh wait, he did accuse me of cherry picking. Gotcha. It only points out some of them. <laughs> I don't know why he does that, but it's a little suspicious to me. Hopefully the stream actually addresses every one of your arguments now, since you're that butthurt. And the last video I was going to make on him was talking about his, um, conversation with Bash to Token Target, uh, including him and a new... You know, he's going to go off into a different topic or subject or whatnot. But I guess that's all I could really respond to, which is pretty much all of his videos that he responded to me with. So, in conclusion, Star Shadow Wolf is a lying, hypocritical, manipulative piece of fucking shit. Not only that he can't take criticism, and that he accuses me of cherry-picking while ironically committing the fallacy fallacy himself. Not only that, but he has to be a douchebag about it. Sorry if I stuttered. Man, I'm doing so much better than the last stream when I roasted the shit out of Will Kincaid, but it'll always get better as time goes by. Alrighty, that's the end of the stream. And holy shit, it's been going on for almost two hours? Well, we're gonna end it now.
I'm the fox with the chipped ear. Have a good night. If the debacle wasn't enough, if the Discord server raid back in October 2018 wasn't enough, the Vashland set drama blew up after I lost my shit and blew up on February 16th, 2019. Vashland set made a response stream, which is short, just a day or so after. And then on February 19th, 2019, Vash Lenset and all the other Spurgs and fuck buddies screeched at me. And then on February 20th through 21st, I exposed Star Shadow Wolf and EMC2103 of being hypocrites for stealing art they didn't own, even though one of them gave credit. It doesn't matter. And that's what it took to make them spiral out of control emotionally. Throughout the 22nd through the 27th, I was going through this back and forth with myself, responding to Star Shadow, responding to Vash Lenset, responding to what's happening with Vash and Dakota, and addressing Will Kincaid's fake and false apology. And then, right as I finished this whole triathlon drama myself on my end, the last words of my final response to Star Shadow Wolf were, and I quote, you have failed to debunk the roast game. You have only debunked yourself. And don't blame me for it. Blame yourself for lying to your own audience. You know, like the same thing you accused me of doing. Because you already made yourself look like more of a hypocrite than you admitted of being. And then, right after that video came out, Will Kincaid had a spurg out right in the evening on February 28th, 2019. And then, months later, I addressed the funny junk drama, which was just Brasenio being a disingenuous son of a bitch, and Law Little being a complete low cow losing his shit. To add on to Chapter 3, I went to 7976 Porty Flamingo Road in New Lexington, Ohio, which is now known in Roast Game Theory lore as the mobile home in the real-life example of the Roast Game Theory, or the case of Nicholas Justin Emmett. On March 3rd, 2019, after spending countless hours of research, and as a part of a mini-series called Bashing the Religious, I made a video called Bashing the Religious, Islam versus Christianity, both are bad, and proving the roast game death toll. This video solidified the roast game death toll in America and confirmed it as fact by doing the math and cutting off irrelevant deaths by other causes of death. To finish the calorie saga, on March 20th, 2019, the first day of spring, I fact-checked a Liz Nepperant ABC News 2014 article, which was also stealing British calories or statistics and using them as America's own when they're not. Then, in April, I go off on the reactionary idiots that tried and failed to cancel me by calling them the real conspiracy theorists. This was, of course, after I made the video called People Don't Think Before They Act, They Act As They Will. Later on into 2019, I get into contradictory consumption statistics more into the real life example of the roast game theory, and it being possible that the roast game happened by families not dying after eating human meat, while avoiding the brain, which also led me to start focusing more on the butt meat portion than the child as a whole. I began going into Canada and the Canadian roast game for the same phenomenon that it is, but it's worse there than here in America. I continued to make proof video after proof video and some commentary slash rant videos along the way throughout the years. I went into a short-lived saga known as Roast Preparation Time on October 4th, 2019. I made my last Roast Game documentary on October 20th, 2019, on the day that marked two years since the conversation began. On the same day, I remastered and revisited the old 2018 Roast Game documentary that started them all, all the while editing it, cutting out dead air and all other unnecessary nonsense. I started making reversed content in late April 2019, beginning an era that will last for well over two and a half years until late 2021 due to YouTube's stricter environment and terms of service concerns. Both a fact of life for David movies, Christmas cannibalism mythology, and some other videos that aren't relevant to the history of not just Brian Mullins the Fox, but the reason I started this channel in the first place, The Roast Game, will be excluded. I'm sorry.
I just have to keep it a buck. By the way, the roast game preceded COVID-19, but happened during the H1N1 flu pandemic and a couple of other pandemics before. So that is not a correlation causation connection that I'm making at all, just to be clear. Now let's get into 2020. Chapter 5 and 6 melt into each other, just like chapter 7 and 8 do the next. So don't get confused. Not much happened to me and my channel in the beginning of 2020. I continued to make random reversed content upon request, working on future projects like Season 3 of the Roast Game Theory, the Canadian Roast Game Theory, and hitting the first major subscriber milestone, which again, I will only mention in Chapter 10. 2020 was the first year that I moved all further rant and commentary videos onto my furry channel. Especially when I mentioned prion diseases in my first video about COVID-19, pandemic, and panic buying. The first research video series I started was called Reach for the Roast Game, and the point of that series was to fact check myself and I failed to prove myself wrong as a result. I looked on Statista to search for statistics to the contrary of my claim for both ham and turkey. There were, of course, other things that happened outside of all this, like having small anti-vax YouTuber libertarians respond to my old videos in the most bad faith way imaginable, especially my response to Shane Killian. 2020 was also the year where I went into Christmas food waste and began the great Thanksgiving versus Christmas comparison into the mix. Season 3 went from mainly focusing on the height of the child to the measurement and caloric data when it came to Christmas roast game butt meat of each child, case by case. The vast majority of the butt meat roasts were roughly a pound as usual. On June 12th, 2020, I made a commentary slash rant video about Christmas food waste. I started a new series later on, a three-part one known as the Canadian Roast Game Theory. The first episode premiered on September 22nd, 2020. The second episode premiered on October 9th, 2020. And finally, the third and last episode premiered on October 31st, 2020. On October 17th, 2020, I made a video called The Roast Game, Thanksgiving vs. Christmas, a stark contrast between the statistics and causality. I made an election prediction video back in June of 2020 that was completely ridiculous and delusional. Trump lost in 2020, in spite of the bitching, coping, and everything else that happened. That will do for 2020. Let's get into 2021 and later on 2022. Let's get into what will be a long segment in this entire documentary. 2021 began with me hitting another channel subscriber milestone I will mention in chapter 10. I said fuck 2020 and early January 2021 was a hell of a shit show. From January 6th all the way up to Biden's inauguration day on the 20th. Trump supporters being as much of a group of sore losers as Clinton supporters were back in late 2016 to early 2017. But not quite as violent as the left, really. Not to veer off topic or be political or anything, but that's just the truth there. I told Trump to get the fuck out of the office. I was just really pissed off. I started to watch channels like Double Toasted, and some of their left-leaning channels reacting to 2020 election cope compilations. In early 2021, I started going into the roast game death toll in both America and Canada, separating the death toll by age and race. On April 6th, 2021, I made a video comparing Christmas dinner statistics and the holiday tradition before, during, and after the roast game era. This commentary slash rant video is most famous for its rant climax, or the 20 fucking years part. I'll play you the entire clip of the climactic point of the rant. Later in the year, I went into what my reaction would be to the three scenarios after the Roast Game of Final Look premieres. The fourth and final season of the Roast Game Theory premiered, especially with the long-awaited two-part finale Spectacular, which is the origin of the data that supports the separation of the death toll by age, race, religion, and who killed each child, single mother, single father, married mother, and married father. On August 2nd, 2021, after a day or so of anticipation, I was able to have my first Discord call interview. The topics were favorite video games, games you play online, including Among Us, movies, and opinions on other irrelevant things, such as Trump and other political things that happened. 
Then it began to be about the roast king. While taking a bit about my past whilst doing so, mentioning trolls and trolling in the past, things got a bit interesting before the interview ended. Overall, there was only one question I edited out of the video version, but the original audio version has that in. It's not like it mattered much to me anyway. The adventurous mischiefs in a post-detective world came out, so did the Roast Game A Final Look, alongside the Roast Game Proof Compilation 2017-2021, the Documentary Compilation Supercut, and the Complete Rants Slash Drama Compilation to celebrate four years of the topic of the Roast Game as a conversation. I'll talk about what directly happened to my channel after that interview in Chapter 10. The Roast Game, the entire timeline, was the last compilation to premiere in the Roast Game Topical Arc timeline, which was the longest of them by far. 19 hours, 2 minutes, and 41 seconds. And last but not least, to finish the timeline, let's get over 2022. This year begins with me reminiscing over the Roast Game Topical Arc timeline, 2017 to 2021, Right before 2022 began, the last Roast Game related article video came out called A Post Roast Game Reality Check on Turkey or Ham on Christmas, a Brian Mullins the Fox article. Before I answered the post roast game question, I made a video on January 10th exposing the fact that the 2014 Les Neppert ABC News article used British Christmas calorie statistics as if it came from America when it didn't to theorize how many calories would a theoretical Christmas dinner and Christmas Day have in total, not just dinner. The video has currently well over 500 views to date. I made videos about culture shock, statistics slash data, numbers by the year, etc. Later in the year around February, I temporarily said goodbye to my furry channel. This was to have been permanent, but I pulled myself out of a channel activity funk later on this year. On the third anniversary of the harrowing experience of what we considered the bloody trailer of New Lexington, Ohio, I made a rant video recapping all the events that took place on February 24th, 2019, including a rant expressing my will to have this be the day to remember for the rest of my life which will also be a day that I lament for the rest of my life. That was also the time when rants were no longer mainly on my furry channel anymore. They were mainly on my second channel now. I started getting into making video essays, the first of which was the history of Thanksgiving dinner and Thanksgiving itself. Then I made this 10-hour behemoth of a video essay about the truth about the history of Christmas dinner and Christmas itself, which also further proves that there was no set-in-stone Christmas dinner tradition, something I said in the video that answered the post-roast game question on January 15th, 2022. The roast game numbers by the year 1998 to 2016 was the first out of many in its own format to be a systematic analysis of statistics in general. The roast game was the first to come out before Thanksgiving dinner, Easter, Independence Day, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, and Memorial Day. And when it comes to the roast game, I'll let a clip of an episode of Season 2 of the Post-Roast Game Theory sum it up well. Let's get into what else I've learned from the roast game. Number one, statistics that don't exist for a few examples, Christmas dinner turkey consumption statistics, Christmas dinner ham consumption statistics, and the average price of a Christmas dinner during the roast game era have a reason for not existing. The one that makes the most sense is that either families didn't consume the said product, turkey or ham, or they lied about what they ate as the centerpiece of Christmas dinner during the roast game era. Two, taste can be objectively measured when it comes to Christmas dinner during the roast game era, and it is only without ham and or turkey at all. Three, families lied about what they ate as the centerpiece of Christmas dinner during the roast game era in general. 4. Billions of hams and turkeys were wasted in total during the entire roast game era and not even consumed at all. 5. The only way we can account for the average price of a Christmas dinner during the roast game era is without the would-be typical centerpiece, ham or turkey. 6. Stealing statistics from another country and using it as your country's own is not how collecting data or how statistics work at all. In fact, it is counter to the whole point of coming up with statistics in the first place. No matter how hard or easy it is, no matter how accurate. And finally, number seven, culture shock was the reason all of this, including the roast game, happened at all. That's all I've learned when it came to the topic of the roast game and the post-roast game topical arc in 2022.
Now let's get into channel happenings, subscriber milestones, and other miscellaneous shit. Here are the subscriber milestones as I have collected them via community posts or the date of a video published where I celebrate subscriber milestone in the description box of said video. 100 subs, May 10th, 2018. 200 subs, October 1st, 2018. 300 subs, June 10th, 2019. 400 subs, September 7th, 2019. 500 subs, October 30th, 2019. 600 subs, December 1st, 2019. 700 subs, around December 18th, 2019. 800 subs, January 5th, 2020. 900 subs, mid to late January 2020. 1,000 subscribers, around February 27th, 2020. 2,000 subs, around May 22nd, 2020. 3,000 subs, around June 26th, 2020. 4,000 subs, September 12th, 2020. 5,000 subs, November 5th, 2020. 6,000 subs, around the beginning of 2021. 7,000 subs, February 6th, 2021. 8,000 subs, March 21st, 2021. 9,000 subs, late May 2021. 10,000 subscribers, June 14th, 2021. Throughout 2018 and early 2019, I had to be on the lookout for any trolls trying to start shit in the chats of any live streams or people who shit talk in the comment section. And after the August 2021 interview, reverse content seemed to die because it was either convenient timing or people just didn't like reverse content and they dislike it more than they like it and it gets less views. Suddenly, the copyright strike occurs on October 12th, 2021. Then, the first warning strike, which was on November 12th, over my politics compilation. And then, right around November 23rd, sometime before Thanksgiving, I got my first community guideline strike. After well over three years of that channel's existence. Almost four. Which fucking sucks. Even though I made a deviant art journal lamenting about it, I moved on from it, and the strikes seemed to stop occurring. This is why YouTube is starting to become more of an unsustainable format for people who just want to make original content, keep true to themselves, and truth in their hearts, and they want to silence people that disagree with the status quo. Even though there are people that actually violate the very vague TOS on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, and others. By the way, I will clip a video that came out a year after the interview of 2021. Hit it. The interview I had included him with Clowfo, Bino, Fabs, Orbi, and Ziffy Clumper. On August 2nd, 2021, Sleepy Ghost emailed me. Of course, I'm going to take out email addresses just to make sure they're not gonna get harassment just for security purposes and for historical purposes only. And this is how it went. We and my friends have watched a couple of your videos and we were wondering if there is any way we could get in contact with you and talk to you, maybe for an interview or something like that, would you be down? Then I replied, sure. And then I asked him, do you have a Discord number slash server that I can jump in for this interview? Well, I mispunctuated. Instead of a question mark, I accidentally put an exclamation mark. And the thing I painted out in red is Sleepy Ghost's apparently old handle on Discord. Before and after the interview, me and Blinks on Discord talked about when I wanted to have the interview. I ended up being in the interview around 6 p.m. It lasted for roughly 40 minutes. I played the interview in one of the episodes of season one of the post Rose Game Theory about what we've learned from the Rose Game Theory. The reason why I covered up Blinks' old Discord handle is not just because he no longer goes by that handle, it's also to shield him for historical and security purposes only. The same went for the screenshots of the emails 
that we shared with one another. He is currently, to my knowledge, offline on Discord, so leave him alone for your own sake. All of this shit had nothing to do with the copyright strike on October 12th, 2021. Nor did it have to do with the copyright strike on a now-deleted channel known as Sasha LaFleur Records, which was basically the reason why I went back to posting on the Roast Game Records for music, instrumental versions, of VH's openings, and other things to begin with. Whoever flagged my politics and sixth laughing compilation should be very ashamed of themselves. Laughing at people hurting themselves or doing stupid shit even when graphic is not dangerous. Hell, it's not even harmful as long as you can fucking either blur it or black it out. Me laughing at memes and YouTube hoops are entirely harmless, no matter how vulgar they may or may not be at any given moment or any given time. We'd usually just chat with each other civilly. He wanted me to explain why I deleted all my reaction videos, laughing compilations, and wanted me to show him where he can see them, which is my bit shoot. And to this day, that is really the end of our direct message history on Discord with one another as of recent. It may change eventually or not. Again, I'm not making this video to stir up any drama at all or anything else like that. Now, you have just witnessed the entire history of the conversation surrounding the roast game, Brian Mullins the Fox, what it took to keep it going, and what it has meant to me dearly, while also talking about my YouTube channel and personality. In conclusion, we went over a lot of things. From videos I made at a certain date, what factors slash sagas I went through topically, etc. There's not a whole lot to add on to this documentary at this point. The reason why the documentary is named Dropping Flies is the impact that all of this had completely outlasted an entire website's capability to maintain moral common footing. Debate.org, just like all others who either had a falling out with me or those I had a falling out with, activity, subscriber-wise, or even internet-wise, dropped like flies. And that is the end of it.